Yeah, thanks for 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 the yeah for the option today to present. Uh, let's say the APR Manager CLI tool, how I have called later, because initially um, the idea was to call it um, APR Manager Swagger based promotion, and um, the the purpose of that tool is to simplify the DevOps approach with the APR Manager by enabling API developers to easily integrate APIs into API Manager, replace them on the register base and uh, then control um, different stages of your API management landscape from, from a single source of truth. And um, I have a number of slides today I will go through to explain the concept and what the tool is doing. And then at the later in, in the presentation, I will do a quick live demonstration about how the tool works, how you can download the tool, what documentation is available and that kind of stuff. This is the idea for today. Before I get started, I would like to talk about uh, the main drivers and the main driver is really to be able to achieve that thing which is shown on the right, the infinite DevOps loop. And um, today it is a little bit difficult, um, so to say, an API manager to have that. And um, the, the driver was basically that an API developer um, for, for him, when he starts to, to create an API, it's very hard to, to import it once into the API manager. Then he's doing all the necessary changes like adding tags, adding custom policies, adding a description, adding an image and all that kind of stuff. And then his front-end API is basically ready to be tested. And then he's realizing, oh, I made a mistake in the Swagger file. And then he had to restart again. And this is a pain. And that's why the second bullet here is making these repeatable changes very easy using a simple DevOps approach. And um, this is what the tool will help and will support. And um, when, when starting with a Swagger file, and that's why the tool was initially called uh, Swagger Promotion, um, this is what I do see what API developers most of the time have. They have it either code generated or they have it out of the Swagger editor like Stoplight or Swagger Hub. And then this is, this is the fundament for his API. This is the API definition. And this is the starting point for the API developer. And that's why this should be the fundament for this tool as well. And with that, it's it's much more easier to, to have an API first approach because the Swagger definition itself, this is API first, this is the design of the API. And with that, it might be much more easier to use our API management solution, for instance, for mocking up APIs that do not exist already. In general, it should remove the burden of an API developer um, to work with our API management solution. At the end, it should be more or less transparent to him. Once he has checked in his API into the DevOps pipeline, it appears by magic on the API management solution without any additional overhead, or let's say almost no overhead for the API developer. And maybe based on that, the acceptance is, will increase to use or integrate APIs even in an early state into the API management system. And the last thing here is you, if you have that Swagger file and uh, let's say, and the other piece, which I'll introduce in a minute, uh, in your version control system, then it is easier to control out of that single source all of your API management instances, let's say the Q&A instance, the production instance, and so on. So that means it becomes a matter of where you deploy that piece to, if it is stay, if it is Q&A, or if it is production. Um, and uh, this is how it works. So that means it starts from the from the Swagger design, which, as I said, which you can out of out of a Swagger editor like Stoplight or like Swagger, Swagger Hub, or you are using a Swagger code generator out of your code annotations, and then you have your Swagger definition uh, available. This is not enough for the API manager to really manage that API. It needs to know how this API should be protected. Maybe you would like to add an image to that API, or you would like to do some really custom, like custom policies or specific certificates needs to be introduced. All that things doesn't fit into the Swagger definition itself. And that's why um, the concept of that tool is to um, have additionally to that API itself an API contract, which is JSON based as well. And um, 
I will explain later what the JSON contract is, but both in combination is enough for, for the tool to be executed on your continuous integration pipeline and then basically um, inserted into the API manager. And what is the concept of that tool? The concept is basically, a, a, let's say, a declared approach. As the API developer, you declare a desired state of your API versus you have an actual state of your API in the API manager. So that means the API developer declares the desired state of his API together with the Swagger file and the API contract. This is picked up by the CI CD pipeline and API manager promotes performs basically all necessary actions, whatever is needed to bring that desired state into the API manager to become the actual API. This is the concept. And the tool is doing that in a very smart way by, by comparing basically all properties, all entities of an API. And you will see that later in the demo, if there is no change because the desired state is already the actual state, then the tool just reports nothing to do. And then it goes, it basically exits. Um, um, they have, this makes it, let's say, uh, life a little bit more easier because you, you do not um, basically make unnecessary changes to the API and the API manager. When nothing needs to be changed, it should stay at it, at it is. And of course, um, the tool must support the lifecycle management, like when an application is already subscribed to an API, um, then the, the tool must take care that this existing application sus subscription stays because the API developer will go only once into the API portal, do an API subscription, create a necessary API key maybe, and then maybe, or I think so, this guy will leave the API portal and will go to his preferred REST client like Postman or any other, and then he will fire up API requests from there. And for that, um, the, the application or the application credentials he is using in Postman must say, must be valid, even if he is doing 50 changes to that API. This is the idea. And um, you see here already what I mean by by the state of API, it is concerning the API status, it is concerning what kind of security, what image you would like to use, et cetera, et cetera. And all these um, entities or properties are supported by the tool at the moment. Um, <clears throat> where to get it? Um, the X-Ray Marketplace, this is the place where you can go and where you can search for the API Manager Swagger Import here, that is still called um, API Manager Swagger Import. And then you just go to the download button which brings you to a GitHub page and on the GitHub page you can download the latest release and then you install it as you can see in a minute um, and during, during the demo. The API contract as I said is um, JSON based and it, it just describes all necessary information for the API. Uh, it can be very, very small. If you do not have any specific entries, then it, it's basically enough that you provide the API name and the API path. And here, by the way, because this is key, and that's why it's highlighted here on, on the slide, the API path, this is the single property which is used to, by the tool to identify if there is already an actual API in the API manager. So that means there's the, the, the tool is doing a lookup on the API path, and if there's an existing API, then that existing API gets updated to the new state. If not, a new API is created. And here's only, let's say, base information, so that means path, summary, images, etc. basically everything you can imagine about uh, an API, which we provide or which we support in API Manager. Then you have custom policies. These are, for me, very important that this can be automated externally using that state. So that means you have possibilities to request routing response fault handlers. And when you set up these pieces, it is checked by the tool that the, these custom policies are really configured for the API manager. Quite often, um, customers have the problem that, uh, let's say, a policy which is referred to by an API and should be promoted to the to the upstream environment, and the policy is not that the, not that available. The, the, the the deployment will fail with that tool. And then we have custom properties, which has been introduced with 7.6.2. By the way, 
this, the program itself has been automatically tested with version 7.6.2 Service Pack 1, um, but I already have, let's say, clients using it for 7.5.3, so that means it should basically work for 7.5.3 as well when you do not disc declare custom properties. And so on, tags, inbound security, it's very important, like which API key, which OAuth um, you would like to use, et cetera, and outbound for the outbound communication. And certificates um, is the other, let's say, pane, or let's call it pane an API manager, that every single API has basically its own certificate handle you have to import certificates for individual API proxy. With that, you can, let's say, externalize it and just re reference from your API definition to the right certificate, and that's all. And staging, um, um, we know that an API might have different settings per, per different stage, and um, the tooling supports it in a way that um, you can use overrides. So that means if you want to have a different state in another stage, like instead of unpublished, you would like to have it published, then you, you do not need to declare the whole API contract again. You just um, provide the necessary information, which what are the differences, and then you say this is the production difference, this is the Q&A difference, and so forth. Okay, then let's have a look how that looks like by doing a simple demo. And I will go and um, download it. I go, will go to the marketplace, then I will go to the GitHub. We will have a quick look into the documentation. Then we download the latest release. We will go to install it, with, which is very simple by just extracting it. I will do it today in, in a manual way, but normally you would do this and provide or make the, make the program available to your CI CD system and then we will basically run it. Okay, um, so let me, let me go to marketplace xway.com. And then it is placed here in the category, obviously, API Manager, API Gateway. And as we are sorting here by relevance, just sort for the newest one. Actually, it is the newest one. And then you see it here, API Manager, Swagger Promote, which gives you a very high-level introduction. But the main content is basically in the GitHub repository I'm using to manage that um, project. And um, then I have here a basic introduction about what the what the purpose of the tool is, but the real documentation is inside this wiki page where you can find, let's say, uh, once again, what it is doing, what is the purpose, what is the goal of that project, and then you get um, individual pages, how to get started, like general information, how to download, how to set it up, what is the general usage, and then it comes to the more specific information, how to manage your API content, contract, what kind of possibilities you have, what kind of properties you can set. You see there is the option to override automatically the description um, or let, uh, change the vhost on the deployment time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, <clears throat> so, and the next thing I'm going to do is to download the latest release. And actually, there are two releases um, because it was, let's say, a late change for the version 7.7.5.3 to be supported. And this is the piece I can now download as a Targi Z archive. And um, I have already done this here on my virtual machine. And that's why here, API Manager Swagger Promote. And the only thing I'm doing now is to um, expand it. And what it provides, of course, a number of JAR files. And then it comes with a number of samples to kickstart the usage of that tool. And um, there is a script which basically wraps the Java program um, for simplification. So that means this is calling at the end Java program, and it it provides you with uh, with a usage. And then you may run one of the following examples. And um, so that means I can now execute based on that. Uh, this is my pet store Swagger definition. This is my minimal configuration, and we will have a look into that now. And this is where my API manager is listening. This is my username and my password I need to use to talk to the API manager. 
And when I'm now looking into that minimal configuration, you see it is really very, very minimal. You see I have an API name, I have my API exposure path, the state should be unpublished and the version is um, 100. And if I now call the program, It talks of obviously with the API manager REST API, and then it is saying that there is no existing API exposed. Here you see that the path of the API is key, and that's why it's deciding for a certain strategy to import that API or to bring that API into the desired state. Importing the backend API, all the details you, you are probably aware of what is necessary, create the API proxy, and then um, it basically updates the proxy with all the necessary, all the defined um, defined properties. In our case, we have the path, we have the version, and we have the name which needs to be updated. And by default, we are adding a pass through um, security profile because nothing was declared and we need to have a profile. Now, if I, if I execute this script again, it turns out that there is no change. There is no difference between the published API or let's say the unpublished API we have just imported before and the API um, we have in our in our configuration. Now I can go and have a look into um, oh sorry um, into our production override. So that means I already have here a call which is minimal config production and this one declares only a different name and I can say that the path should be the same but my state should be published and I would like to have an image for that API and the organization is the same. So that means I do not need to um, uh, to declare all all properties again. I just can declare the delta if I want. And obviously, normally, the image would be the same on every stage, but it is good to highlight that. So uh, before I execute that, I go into my API manager. Sorry. And... and search for the minimal API. Minimal. So now you see there is the minimal API, it's version, it's unpublished, believe me it has no image at the moment, and now I would like to, to call or to override, let's say I, I, I basically deploy that API now to a different stage and instead of providing a complete new um, a complete new contract, I just say that the stage should be the production stage. And now it's realizing that there is an override necessary, so that means it's, it's basically mixing up the API base API contract information with the production API configuration. Now it's saying that, that there is already an existing API belief or assume if we now would really deploy to production and there would be no API existing, it doesn't matter. It just brings it to the published state with the image, etc. Uh, in the same way. Uh, so that means it's just here because I'm using the same API manager. And if I now refresh my API, you see that by magic, the, the, the name has changed, the state has went into production. And if I now, if I now open it, you see that um, the state is passed through and I have an API image as well. So this, is, this, this was basically easy because the state was unpublished and unpublished changes are more or less simple. But now assume that I would like to add an API key because I made a mistake, my API is published and I would like to add an API key. For that, I go into my sample folder and there is a complete config and I just grab that security profile here out of it and put it into my, um, let's say into my base into my base configuration because that API should be API key secured on all different stages. So now I have defined API key. And if I now execute my script again, it will realize, hey guys, this is a breaking change. And you cannot just easily change the security config to, to something different than it was before. But I know what I'm doing. You can do that kind of changes all the time when the API is still in pub unpublished, but when it is published, you have to force it or you have to do something manual. And now it's really doing all the necessary steps. It realized that this change can't be applied 
uh, on that existing API. And that's why we are re-importing the API again. We are applying all necessary changes, including the image, including tags, if, if we would have configured the name, etc. All the pieces would, would we have done normally by hand is now executed by, by the program. Finally, we are deleting the old API before we have granted access to existing application consumers or API, yeah, API consumers. So if I now reload the page, I have to reload because it's now a new API internally, but you do not see a difference. Um, so let's go here and say complete. Or oh, not complete, minimal, my mistake. So now it's still minimal. API on production, but you see that the inbound security has been changed to API key. And now as the API developer, I can go to the API portal or before I would like to grant access um, to that API to all organizations to make that API visible to the user I'm using right now in API portal. I'm Dave today. And say it's Dave again and and now I should see my API. Yeah, this is the minimal API on production. And now, of course, it's saying that we need to create an application to subscribe to that API. And um, I already have an application, including an AP API key. But what's not that not, not yet in place is the actual API subscription to the API we have just inserted. So that means apply, we create a subscription. And go back to the APIs. And now I can hopefully test my API. Yeah, select the API key. And then we say, I would like to find all the pending pets. Okay, that was, I would not say that was easy, but this is only the most of the time, I believe it is not that we are changing the API contract itself, that we are, that we are changing API security. Most of the time, an API developer will change the Swagger definition itself. And this is what I will lastly simulate today. And I go into my Swagger definition I have. And now I say that this one here should change. And the pieces that I'm, we cannot, or the program is not comparing the Swagger definition field by field. It's basically comparing it on a byte, on the byte level. So that means when the Swagger definition has a tiny change, it is considered as a change and it will be considered as a breaking change because Swagger is too much and there could be change anything inside. That's why it's, that's why it's a breaking change. And I have just marked something in the documentation as red. And if I now say I would like to try to replicate that without the forcing, then it's saying that recognize the following breaking changes. The swagger definition has changed. And uh, in order to replicate that, I have to enforce it. And now basically again happens that we are creating a new API. Um, we are applying all necessary changes and the new Swagger definition is imported, obviously. And if I now reload my API page here, the this statement, you see it already here, has been updated, is now bold. And ob obviously I could do that with API methods, inserting new parameters and that kind of stuff. And the good thing is that because now I'm, I'm the API developer, I have changed a small piece in my Swagger definition. And I expect from the API management solution that um, I do not need to resubscribe to my own API again, because I'm in my Postman, I'm, I want to use the same API key as before to test my API. And this is what is now possible because um, the program has managed all that to, to persist the current API subscription. And with the zero downtime deployment capability, that's even possible to do in production so that none of the API consumers will have an interruption in, in production. Um, yeah, this is um, what the program provides. And as you can see here in the samples complete, this is where it looks like when you would like to do more, when you would like to do a vhost or when you would like to have routing policies enabled or tags configured or even custom properties. This is the example when you would like to go and insert certificates and why not run this one as the final thing 
just take the example here from complete and insert this one into the API manager. It's super simple at the end because um, so if I now go into the API manager or let's get let's go into the API portal with a different user who is able to see that API because it is unpublished. This is NR. <clears throat> and if I go to my APIs, I should see my complete API, which is again, of course, the pet store, but it doesn't matter. But you see that this API is automatically upgraded or you do not see so much here. Uh, let me refresh it here. Um, because I would like to make clear that now this API is automatically right from the beginning uh, went into the state published and has already everything configured. You see, we already have text configured. The inbound security is configured to an API key. The vhost has been changed to API customhost.com. I can go into the API definition. The description has been overwritten by something manual. I have tags automatically inserted for that API and my custom properties, which could be used by my runtime policies are configured as well. You see that automatically we have requests, routing, and response policies. Okay, that's enough for the demo. And um, continue with some, some remaining slides. What is not yet supported, um, the API contract today or the tool itself doesn't support um, method level configuration. So that's so to say, if I want to have a custom policy specific for a method, this is not yet possible. It is planned and it is prepared in, in, in the program by having the right data structure, but not yet implemented. Then um, the same for the API method level description and the API contract deep merge. Uh, that means you can override the name just, this, just as a single piece, but you cannot say um, that you would like to have in your security profile in production only say that the take from is not is query instead of header. And then just declaring that single piece here uh, as, a, as a security profile in your in your production configuration, that will not work, and then it will be considered as an incomplete security profile. So that means it has to be a complete one for for the production or for the other stages as well. Um, would be helpful to have this as well. Um, what else I do plan for for this is. Um, at the end, I would like to be able or to provide a CLI which allows API developers to completely externally manage their APIs in API Manager. And this includes that quotas should be able to be managed by the API developer. This means that I can decide as the API owner what should be the system quota. So that means what is the maximum number of requests my API is able to handle. And I would like to decide um, what each application should get by default. And the next thing is organizations. The piece or the step I have done today manually that I have granted access to all of my organizations, I would provide the option um, in the tool to say, say what organizations automatically should have access to my API. And if the organizations are configured, then the program will automatically automatically grant access. And finally, basically the same applications that existing applications can be declared. And if so, then these applications will automatically subscribe to my API. And as YAML becomes more and more popular, I, I would like to support, I plan to support YAML-based Swagger definitions um, into um, the tool. And that's all for today. Thank you.